Yeah. Okay. Here we are. And if a double decker bus crashes into us, she died by your side. Hello. I just said something that Eric was about to do this time concert. Uh huh. Eric was amazing. Nice. I <sighs> uh, wish I had coffee. She's been around a long time. <sighs> oh, God, I'm so sleepy. Hello. <laughs> oh, I think Wendell keeps next to it. Although my mom, my dad, my mom, she didn't want us to listen to that song after the music video. Was it yes, inappropriate yeah. in some way? Yeah, she still in downtown Dallas. Oh. oh, wow. And, uh, Sounds like a very hurt baby. <laughs> yeah. She had to pay like $500 and like six months of, six months of um, thing. You know Probation? <laughs> Yours is Denise. I have my grandmother's name. <laughs> my grandma's name is Lauren. Lauren? Mm -hmm. Oh. It's weird that some people just have an initial, even though I know that they have I middle I names. Been, I think it's like Lynn. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't want to say because I forgot to turn it in when I finished it. You know, I was going to ask you about that because technically it is too late to get any credit. But when I looked at it, I was like, I don't think he just like rushed this out in one night or anything. Wait, my canvas is weird. Really you just forgot to turn it in. It like really late. My canvas is weird. Did you get my essay? Mm -mm. That's my second time trying to send it in. Hmm? That's my second time trying to send it in. No, I didn't get it. Does Candace not like me? I don't know what the deal is. But Green Eyes by Echo I do that's also a very good song. Okay. Bye. Stop sending me TikToks. I'm not on TikTok. All like all of my friends send me TikToks all the time. Oh yeah, it's today's. But what? Lindsay, Uzi, Cash. Oh yeah, I hate that one. What does that mean? So I looked it up and I still don't understand it because uh, Lindsay Woolsey actually means like this heavy fabric that clothes are made out of. But when I looked it up, they were like, "What nonsense do you have to speak to us again?" But like, what is it? It's just saying you speak nonsense. It's not as good as some of the other ones. I didn't really like yesterday's either. <laughs> to die by your side is such a heavenly way to die. And if a double decker bus. Mm -hmm. I think it's like Fortnite Monopoly, isn't it? I don't know how to play Monopoly. What? I know. I'm sure I played as a kid at some point, but like literally the last time I even remember looking at it was uh, when I lived in the place I moved out of when I was 10. So, uh, Monopoly is a, is a friendship dangerous. That's what I hear. Miss Kathan plays with her family a lot, and it sounds like it's really stressful. And then my, when my best friend got married, she like the first holiday she spent with her husband and his family, she was like, I can't be with these people. Like they're too competitive. We played Monopoly and it ruined my life. <laughs> Golly, I wish this cord was a little longer. Let's let these people in. Hello, 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 hello. Hi. How 
how is everyone doing? I'm good. Um, my stepdad bought me lunch and um, I'm coming to the school in like an hour because I have band practice. Oh, nice. Well, that's exciting. All right, let's see. We got everyone except for Victoria, it looks like, which is only 120. We can give her a couple minutes. To die by your side is such a heavenly way to die. Oop, nope. Yes. Hi, you're fine. <laughs> do you want it right now to do it tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> no it's fine I, I like the honesty but it was also like it sounded a little sarcastic like oh no I hope I don't lose this <laughs> earlier today um I was in another class I was like let's you guys finish reading this chapter on your own and then we'll read the next chapter together on Thursday and they were like no we want to read it together and I was like but then it puts off like finishing the book and finishing the test and James Canning was like I'm gonna be honest I'm not gonna read this on my own I was like okay we'll read it Thursday fine <laughs> I know, I respect it. I respect the honesty. I don't respect the work ethic, but I respect the honesty. He's funny. Okie doke. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys um, because we're gonna go over a few things and then I'm gonna do some like practice. No, you get back over here. Um, okay. So on Canvas, this is this week, but I'm actually going to draw your attention back to the week of January 19th, which is a long time ago. Um, actually, it's not that long ago, but nearly two months. Um, it seems like a long time ago when you're looking at it in weeks. And I think I upload a lot of this stuff on the same day, but this is stuff that's going to continue to be important, um, especially like next week, you're going to get a new essay assignment. Um, and let's see which essay assignment is. you're going to have to. I can't decide yet which synthesis essay I'm going to have y'all do. It's between two. Um, but you'll have to find your own sources. And so the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the MLA guide from Purdue Online Writing Lab, which is just an excellent resource. And I know that I've gone through this with you before, obviously, because it's linked on Canvas. Um, but this is a website that even now I go back to, like, <laughs> this is such a nerdy thing to admit, but like, I have had friends message me on Instagram and be like, hey, do you know how to cite this thing? I'm like, I don't, but let me look it up. And I use the online writing lab, like citing things in particular formats, like the basics of it are things that I know and remember, but for like really specific stuff, you don't really have to remember it because you have so many resources out there to help you. Um, and that's kind of one of the things that you guys talked about in your dumbest generation essays about how like, we might appear to be dumber than we are, like people under 30, which I'm not under 30, but younger people. Um, but it's okay because we have all these resources at our fingertips. And so our intelligence is kind of just shifted. Like we don't have to do all the work up front because we have the internet to do it for us. And that's not necessarily a bad thing as long as we know how to find the information. So I'm trying to tell you how to find the information. I've, so I've linked to this, um, and also for the record, I'm pretty sure that next year when those of you who are in 11th grade are doing your senior capstone project, we're gonna make them all be in MLA. 
um, the written portion. We This year, it's, you can do MLA or APA. I think next year we're going to just say MLA because most a lot of people have learned that from Mike Baum and then you learned about it in English classes. So you're just going to know how to do that a little bit better. Um, so over here, like under the general format, there's so much information, so many different things that you can look at here. Um, what I have right here, I'm going to go to in-text citations because that's obviously going to be like when you're quoting something within the text of your essay. And the only really important thing here is to realize that there's gonna be some differences depending on like, if you have one author or multiple authors, or if you don't know who the author is, but the great thing is that all that information, like no matter what kind of source you have, it's on this website and it'll show you how to find it. So that's great. Um, but most of them are going to be something like this, particularly if you're using like a book or an article that's like more than one page, um, which if you guys are in with 101 next year, we'll definitely get into some research stuff. And there's a lot more resources available to us in English 101 just because of the databases that we can use through Trident, which is really nice. Um, but obviously like you have kind of two options here. If you are quoting something, you can introduce your source in the context of your sentence, which is what's going on with this one. Wordsworth stated that romantic poetry was marked by, by a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. That's the quoted part. We've already said earlier in the sentence that it's Wordsworth. So all we need to put is the page number in parentheses. And also you'll notice the period is outside the parentheses, which is outside the quotation marks. Sometimes people don't know like, where do I end the quotes? Where do I put the period? Where does everything go? The period is gonna come last if it's at the end, of, if you're quoting at the end of the sentence. If you don't introduce your source earlier in the sentence, then you're gonna wanna include the author's name in the parentheses. So with this one, Romantic poetry is characterized by the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. And then you have Wordsworth 263. And then this one is showing you um, that you would still cite it if you paraphrase it. If it's not your original thought, even if you don't necessarily put the exact quotation, if you're taking the information from another source, you still need to cite it. Um, so you'll see it doesn't have quotation marks here, but it's taking the information from it and we still have to cite it. Um, so I'm not gonna go through like every bit of this website with you because there's so much, it's a huge website, um, but that means it's got all the information you might ever possibly need about MLA. Um, but like, if you scroll down, you can see like in-text citations for print sources with a known author, uh, with no known author, um, with multiple editions, if you're citing a chapter, if you're citing, like all these things, um, if you're citing multiple authors with the same last name, basically any kind of situation you're gonna come up across. Um, in fact, just last week, I guess it was last week, shortly before the senior projects were due, Dominic came up and asked me, like, if I'm citing, a quote within a quote, like I interviewed someone and they quoted someone in the interview, how do I cite that? And I was like, I'm gonna get back to you. <laughs> let me let me look at the Purdue Online Writing Lab and I found the information I needed. Um, so the other stuff here, this is for work cited and it's basically like, depending on what kind of source you have, how would you include it on a work cited page, which you will have to do. Um, and again, I'm not gonna go through these very extensively right here, but actually what I wanna show you, basic format. This is all the basic rules of formatting and stuff. Um, again, like depending on what kind of source you're looking at here, how you should cite it. And then another great thing it has is a sample works cited page, which is formatted exactly how it should be. And an MLA sample paper, so I actually don't love this MLA sample paper just because of all of the little annotations and stuff around it. I feel like that's kind of confusing. So I don't love that. 
But because I don't love that, what I did for you guys was to put another paper up here um, on canvas. There's a paper I wrote in college that is all correctly formatted and everything, except for the fact that these days, this has changed since then, that should be italicized instead of underlined. That's just a little thing. Um, but it's all formatted correctly. It's all, um, the work cited is correct. And you'll also notice it's in alphabetical order, which is the way it needs to be. Um, so other than like some things being underlined instead of italicized, it's all correct. And also you guys haven't read Ethan Frome. You're not gonna read Ethan Frome. So this is like the content of it doesn't help you in any kind of way or give you a leg up. I'll like my English three classes reading it right now. Um, this was the other thing, MLA format order. And this is a screenshot that I keep on my, um, on my desktop at all times because I do have to cite a lot of stuff and I have to teach kids how to cite stuff. And this is the basic format that you're gonna do in a works cited page. Um, for any given works cited, you're not gonna have necessarily every one of these things. Um, like container, for instance, most things don't have a container. Most kind of sources don't have a container. And what that is, is like, Great this is a huge book I have that is a Why? an anthology, huh? Why is it so big? It's an anthology. It's got so much stuff. This is the Norton Introduction to Literature. Um, it says the shorter 12th edition. So <laughs> there's there are longer ones. Uh, this is like the size of every book I had in college because I was a literature major and we had like all of these freaking anthologies. But if I wanted to quote, uh, mm -mm -mm. oh, William Faulkner's story, A Rose for Emily is in here. Um, the way that I'm going to cite that is his name first, Faulkner, comma, William, the title of the source, A Rose for Emily, and then the title of the container, which is this book. So if something is contained, like if your source is contained in a bigger work, then that's your container. Another example of that would be uh, if you wanted to cite an episode of a television show, which is absolutely a thing. Um, like you probably wouldn't have an author for that one. I'd have to look that up to be sure. But like the episode title, you would put like diversity day and then the title of the container would be the office. And then probably other contributors would be like writer or director. But again, I, I don't think I've ever actually cited an, an episode of television. So I'd have to look at that to be sure. Um, okay, so what we're gonna work on today are some IXL skills. I'm not just gonna like leave you to your devices immediately. Um, again, on the week of 119, if you don't know how to get to your IXL, I put all of your username and passwords here. And I wasn't shy about it because who's gonna log on to IXL and do somebody else's work? That would be crazy. However, I don't want that because I already have it. Put that in my garbage. Um, okay, so on IXL, if you go to your recommendations, there should be four things recommended to this class, and they're all these research skills. And I'm going to go through each one and do like one or two just to show you what they are and how they work. I actually think these first two are pretty easy. Um, I'm not sure if it's one of those things where like, I think it's easy because I'm the English teacher, but I think that y'all will find those two fairly easy. So the first one is understanding a work cited entry. And what you're gonna look at is like, there is an example here of a work cited entry. And what can you tell about it from this work? So if I'm looking at this one, um, I can tell it's either a newspaper article, a poem or a, show, or a short story. And how could I tell that? Um, 
it's from the Oregonian. And even if I don't know what that is exactly, it sounds like a newspaper. It's definitely, it's got a container. So it's gonna be like part of a bigger work. I, so I would guess there's a newspaper article. Also the title of it sounds much more newspapery than poem or short story. So am I right? Yes, I am. So this one, Nikhil Jane's 10, the 10 most important young artists of the year, message to Zachary Gorski, February 11th, 2015, email. This one is super easy. What can I tell about this? It says email. I'm gonna guess it's an email. And this one, and then I'll move on. Um, this is either gonna be a book, a poem, or a newspaper article. And again, I have like a container here that sounds more like a newspaper article than like a fiction or poetry anthology. So I would say newspaper. And I would be correct. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this for like, where have you been? <laughs> Okay, the second one is recognizing the parts of a worksite entry. I can only imagine. Like, I, I'm i sure I would suck at math. Yeah. I don't blame you. I can't, I can't deal with math. Um, so this one, we're gonna select the publication date. Well, there's only one date to choose from, so yeah. The date of access, access on this date. See, this one is super easy. The article title, there's really only two things that I would think you might guess, and it would either be this or this. But again, we know that the Washington Post is a paper. And so that's probably not the title of the article. This would probably be the title of the article. Newspaper name, Oregon. I could, I could do this one all day, so easy. So the, the next two are a little bit more complicated. Using in-text citations. And it wants you to actually type into this one. So this is like, the first thing you'll see is like the original, whatever, the, like the piece of the essay or whatever. And then in this blue box, you're gonna be able to edit it. It gives you your source here and it gives a quote from the source here. So uh, if I am trying to cite this thing, ooh, you kind of have to think about like what this part would look like if it were in a work cited format, because it's not. So the first thing would be the last name. I know it's gonna come before the period. So I'd say brown and it says page 42. No comma between them, just brown 42. Let's see if I'm right. Ooh, yep, I am. This is the hardest one though, in my opinion. This is from To Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> oh, uh, by Harper Lee, page 39. Yeah. Oh, the English one class is doing it right now. Um, and before I do this one, I just want to draw your attention back to this. You want to do this before the period. You want to put your um, your entry in before the period. So for this one, looks like we're gonna do through eight. Are we right? Yes, we are. Okay. So the last kind that you have is identifying plagiarism, which is I think not as hard as the last one, but harder than the first two. You're gonna compare the student text with the source and determine whether it's plagiarized. And if it is plagiarized and why it's, like what makes it plagiarized. So it's got your source up here and it's got the quote from the source. And then the student says, according to Seabrook, so they have, told us wh what their source is. Not a single one of the major agricultural crops grown in this country actually originated here. Um, so they've given us the source. Would you guys say that this is plagiarized? Plagiarized or not plagiarized? 
you see now? It does. Oh, your other, so your options here, I just want you, and these are gonna be your options on every question of this type. No, it's not plagiarized. Yes, it is plagiarized because it fails to use quotation marks. Yes, it's plagiarized because it fails to cite the source. Or yes, because it fails to use quotation marks and fails to cite the source. So let's see. Terrific. Um, <laughs> this is terror. So what about this one? It's got quotation marks. Is this plagiarized? Where did it get? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. And you just couldn't see that it said that. Um, this one does not have quotation marks. I don't know why it's not telling me I get it right, but I did. Um, okay, so one thing I wanna draw your attention to with this one is that sometimes, hmm, how do I say this in a not confusing way? On this IXL activity, it needs to have quotation marks. There are times when you might cite stuff and paraphrase it, and you wouldn't need quotation marks. But as far as I've practiced in this one, that's not a thing. So if it doesn't have quotation marks, yeah, okay. So when you go to your IXL, you'll go to recommendations and you'll see all the recommendations that you have for different classes. So I'm actually gonna to go to one of yours. David, you're alphabetically first. So you'll look right here at the skills suggested by your teachers. Come on, little buddy. And you can see they're not, they might not all be in order because I had recommended a couple of these earlier in the year at some point, but these two, and then you'll just go down until you see a little book right here those two um you might have i can i can check it along um but you can go into those and we still have plenty of time i want you guys to try to get to 80 percent on at least two of those um I, well because it's a little bit more realistic than 100 i mean the good thing about this is you can always still get a hundred. And I mean, by all means, like keep going and get a hundred. Um, but like, if you get one wrong, it doesn't mean you're not down to a 95 or a 90. You are temporarily, but you can build it back up. Yeah, you can, you can build it back up. So um, under those four, aim for 80% on two of them. You can, you can keep going and try to get a hundred percent, but that is your goal for today. I want to go ahead and just mention what we're doing tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a success session. And I doubt I'll keep very many of you because you might have below a 60 at this point, but there isn't really anything you can do to make it up uh, unless you just want to stay for like, so loud. I know, it's so loud. It sounded like it was just outside the window during fourth period, it's so annoying. Um, everything that you have turned in, I think, I really can't look at this. Um, yeah, everything you've turned in is already due or like past 
how late you can turn it in, except for if anybody has not yet taken the vocabulary quiz, um, you can say tomorrow and take it then. Um, but other than that, like we'll, we'll come and take attendance and then I'm gonna let you guys go to work on your music video rhetorical analysis. Um, and then we'll also have some time. I'm gonna give you all a new like shorter assignment on Thursday and then we'll have time to either finish the um, music video or the other activity on Friday. But for today, I excel. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my stuff off. So y'all just let me know if you need me.